Hi, Lamb School friends. This is Car this is Miss Colcourts in the Lamb School office, and I'm here with Chief Corthell from the Fire Station 22. And I wanted to ask him a few questions and see about what he has to say. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for visiting with us today. Um, in what ways do you help our community in addition to putting out the fires? Um, firefighters actually do a lot uh, in the community. We uh, we do safety checks on people's houses and also we have a smoke detector program as well so if they need smoke detectors put up or if they need them changed or if they just need advice then we do all those services as well free of charge so um, a lot of help a lot of community uh, interaction um, when we get to um, go and make medical calls so we're all EMT certified so not only do we fight fires but we also help the people in the ambulances out too so awesome. we all show up and we all work together and um, really provide a lot of teamwork for the community. Yeah, I've noticed if you see some kind of accident on the road, we see the fire trucks coming too. So it's really wonderful yes. to see. Yep. Yeah. Um, how did you become a firefighter? Or how does somebody become a firefighter? Personally, uh, my great grandpa was a firefighter and my grandpa and my dad and now me. Um, hopefully my sons will continue on in the legacy. Yeah. Um, and um, you know, it took some schooling, so, and, and I know that sometimes you think, well, I'm never going to use this <laughs> out in the real world, and trust me, you use a lot more school than what you think in the real world. So it's very important to stay in school, um, have good conduct, respect your parents, respect your teachers, because in a job of firefighting, you have to respect a lot of people, and sometimes yeah. it's not really easy because some, some people can be mean. So respecting your teachers, respecting your, your elders um, are all great things and um, just continuing on school and then you go to fire school when you get out of high school oh, wow. and um, you get to learn all the cool stuff we get to do we get to work with ladders and ropes and fire hoses and all kinds of stuff trucks and and all, all that good stuff um, and then once you graduate fire school you go to EMT school and you learn the medical side of firefighting. Is, mm -hmm. is there a lot of fire stations around our area or in Houston, I guess? There are, yeah. There's a lot of fire stations around Houston. Um, Cypress Creek, which is the fire department that I belong to, has four and soon to be five next oh. year. So we're building a fifth station down by the racetrack off of Gessner and Fallbrook. Um, and that's right by where all the horses race off the Beltway in 249. And um, down there, we actually have Cy Fair and we have Northwest. Uh, fire departments and we mutual aid with Houston Fire Department and Champions and Klein and Ponderosa and I can go on and That's on. That's a lot, yeah. But there is a <laughs> lot in our, there's a lot up and down FM 1960. If you drive down that road, there's a fire department every couple miles, so. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. And um, how many people work in this area, or in your office, I guess you say, this station? Four firefighters here usually and a district chief. Okay. And so uh, we're on a 48 hour 96 hour off schedule so we stay here for two days and then we get to go home for four days oh wow okay so do you sleep here then we do yeah and <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll show you that eventually we'll get to the dorm um my bed's nice and made so oh that's uh, nice yeah, it won't look it won't look any crazy <laughs> that's right make sure you make your bed before that's you show right. it to a friend even right? <laughs> the firefighters make their beds <laughs> that's right okay well um when you're not putting out fires what do you do well a lot of a lot of our time is spent in continuing education and um, the way that the world is right now with technology makes it really hard uh, to stay on top of things if you're not continuing to learn and so all of our firefighters are expected to meet a minimum amount of uh, of work or, mm -hmm. or learning uh, per month and um, we send those out online we do a lot of online training, but we also do a lot of hands-on training. At Station 24, we have a big burn, to burn tower, burn building, and uh, we have a lot of training, uh, I guess, props that we can use down there. Yeah. And so we spend a lot of time training um, for the calls, and obviously we spend a lot of time cleaning because things get <laughs> dirty when yeah. you're somewhere for two days straight. So yeah. we clean a lot, and we cook a lot, and we like to hang out with each other a lot. We like the team the team atmosphere. So yeah. um, it's... it's uh, it's a fun job. You never deal with the same thing whenever you show up to work. It's always something different. So. Well, that sounds awesome. Mm -hmm. So you think you could show us around? Yeah, I'll show you the trucks and I'll show you the dorms. Okay, awesome. Right. Thank you. All right. Well, here we are at the fire truck. Let us know. Yeah, we made it. Um, yeah. <laughs> right here. Uh, this is our hose compartment. This is where all of our what we call attack lines are. And these are the hoses that we use to attack the fires. How many houses do you there have? are three in this compartment and there are two that are already attached 
So they're attached to the truck right now so the truck can pump water to these hoses. And this one is detached in case we have to make a fire that's really high upstairs, like the Noble Energy building, the tall building off of 249. If we have to go up the stairs, we take this hose with us and we load it on our, on our shoulder. Yeah. So this is 100 feet and these are 200 feet each. Okay, so the water's in there. How much water does it hold? Yeah, the fire truck holds a thousand gallons of water. So it has wow. a lot of water, <laughs> but when you're pumping, you know, three to 400 gallons per minute, it goes quick. It goes within about two and a half to three minutes. Oh, it gets wow. rid of a thousand gallons, it can. Yeah. Um, so we really take um, precaution to hold uh, all the water we can in here. And so we'll have a hydrant, a fire hydrant, and we'll have a hose and the fire hydrant and the hose hook up to this and it fills our truck with water while we use it. So we have an endless supply of water as long as that fire hydrant's operating. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. So that's the fire hydrant. Over here, we have some tools and just some random screwdrivers and saws and everything because sometimes when we have to cut a hole or we have to break a hole in the roof or we have to break someone's door down to get in to save them or save the house, we not only like to do that for life-saving purposes, but we like to patch their house back up too. It's important to clean up after yourself. So firefighters, yeah. we do the same thing. When we're done working, we like to make sure that their house is resecured and everything. So these are our tools to do that. We also have some medical tools here. Um, these are seat collars. We put them on your neck when you're in a car accident, if you have neck pain, and we send you to the hospital with those on. Have you ever uh, saved a cat out of a tree before? Uh, yes, we have. You have. We don't, <laughs> we don't generally do that because there's not very many scat skeleton, cat skeletons in trees, they say. So we don't usually do that, but um, under certain circumstances, we'll help somebody out if they need it. So That's usually really cool. if you set out food, they, they come out. They'll come back down. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's good to know. Yeah. Oh my goodness, what's all this? So these are our hand tools. Um, these are what I would say traditional tools in the fire service. Um, this is called a flathead axe and this is called a halogen bar. The cool thing about this tool is, is that it was actually designed by thieves in the Northeast. Yeah, they would use it to break into houses and the fire department said, man, we need to get into houses too. So we're going to take that idea and we're going to make our own. So they made something called a halogen bar. And um, these two tools together can open up a lot of things. These are basically keys to anyone's house. So if you need to get into something, these two tools together will make it happen. So that's why they're together on this plate. And then on the back side here, we have some more. We have some more tools. Right here, we have a pick head axe. Again, similar to the flat head, but it has a pick on it. And we have some long bolt cutters. So if there's a fence or a gate we need to get into to make access to the property, we can with these. And this is a pry bar. So we can get leverage if we need to pry something open. And this is a sledgehammer. And it does what sledgehammers do, it crushes things. So we have a K-12 saw, and we have extra blades for this. And this is used to cut concrete, metal, um, any kind of, I guess, obscure uh, material besides wood. This can cut wood, but we prefer to use the chainsaw, okay? So yeah. we'll use the chainsaw to cut holes in roofs, so on and so forth. And that ax right here is a, a good backup tool to the saw if the saw doesn't work for whatever reason when you're up on the roof, you don't have much, many options. Um, this right here is called a combi tool. It's a combination cutter and combination spreader. And so when you show up on scene and sometimes you're passing by and you see firefighters using this, they're usually using it to cut open a car to free someone out from the car because it's crushed around them. And so we'll use this tool right here along with this and this hose, and we'll cut the car out from around the person so we can transport them if needed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why a fire truck is red? So inter interestingly <laughs> enough, um, back in the 1900s, red was a really expensive color to get. Uh, most cars were black. And so the fire departments not only wanted to differentiate themselves from the old Model T Fords, the black ones, yeah. and have red, because it stood out and everyone knew it was a fire apparatus. Yeah. But they also wanted red because it was the more expensive color and they like to be flashy. Yeah. So that's why you see firefighters all the time out here washing the trucks and making sure they're clean. Not only because it's the citizens fire truck, yeah. our taxpayers buy this, um, but also because it's supposed to be flashy. So. You know it's coming and it's yeah. coming to help. Yeah, right? it's supposed to be looking good. Yeah. And, um, 
Do you ever have dogs ride on the truck? We don't for liability okay. reasons now. Um, we love dogs. Um, the problem is, is that sometimes dogs being animals, can uh, run astray and that they can they can hurt people sometimes unfortunately especially when they're spooked yeah. and a lot of the stuff that we're doing um, there's a lot of loud noises there's a lot of commotion going on and so we, we we no longer use dogs in the fire service however there are a few departments in our area that have therapy dogs that come to the Aww. station and hang out with the guys yeah. because the guys experience some things that are tough to deal with sometimes and so they get these dogs to kind of take their mind off of things and hang Help out with them. So, I know, because sometimes we cool. see them in the books or the yeah. um, cartoons. and we were Yeah, the Dalmatians experience. would yeah. be there. And, and what the Dalmatians' job was, was to pretty much keep the horses in line with each other uh, when they were horse drawn. So the dogs would run next to the horses and keep them in line on the way to the fires. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, can you show us some more stuff around the house, yeah. around the station? Yeah, no problem. Okay, thanks. Wow, this is so great. I have never been in a fire truck. Can you tell me, this is the cab. Can you tell me about it? Yeah, sure. So where you're at right now is where our firefighters sit. Um, those are the folks that really do most of the grunt work or the hard work um, around, the, around the station and on scene. Um, so cool. Also where you're sitting, you see there's backpacks inside of the seats. Those are our air packs. That's what we have on our backs when we go inside of fires so we can breathe. Um, and we don't breathe in any of the bad smoke. So back there, we usually have two firefighters. We have the capability for more if we uh, decide to staff heavy, if we have more people than, than just the normal four. Um, and then up here, we have the driver's seat where I'm at. The driver's seat has a lot of buttons, as you can see, a lot of screens, and it takes a long time to become proficient for driving one of these big vehicles. And then also you have to learn how to pump the vehicle as well. So not only do you have to learn how to drive, you have to learn about math and hydraulics. So you have to be good in math and you have to be good about hydraulics. So something to look forward to. That's a lot. Um, over there to the driver's right is the captain or the officer of the truck, okay? And what their job is, is they're in charge of the entire scene until someone more in charge gets there. So a supervisor, so someone like a chief would relieve the captain from the scene and the captain could go to work with his crew. And the captain is responsible for all of his crew members, the truck, the station while he's here, and everything else. So again, that's another promotion from driver to captain. So the captains are very important. They're the backbone of the fire service. Okay, so my understanding is they have to get ready pretty fast, Chief, right? Before yeah, they usually get on. it's pretty quick when we're responding to an emergency. Uh, we got to get on the road and we got to get moving quick. So our firefighters are trained to put on their gear and put it on efficiently. And so I picked one of our finest, uh, firefighter Kai Reimer here to awesome. demonstrate for us. And I'm gonna um, put him on the clock. So he doesn't know that yet, but he's gonna be on the clock and we're gonna share his time with everybody. So All right. he's thrilled. All right, you ready? <laughs> Go. So now he's putting on his soft hood to protect his neck and his ears and his face from any kind of heat or elements. He's putting on his pants that were already connected to his boots. He's putting on his big jacket. It's nice and hot in Texas in the, in the summertime when we have to get dressed. And now he's securing it with his latches. Latching up his coat, making sure that no skin is exposed. very important that he puts his mask on because this mask is his ability to breathe. The backpacks that I showed y'all in the trucks um, are connected to a hose that connects to his mouth right there. That is amazing. And just like that, in a minute, He's dressed ready to go. He has no skin showing, no nothing. So he can go into a fire as long as he had his backpack with his regulator showing. That's awesome. So You're like very it. fast. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, I just wanted to get the heart rate up a little bit. Oh uh, yeah. Did you already work out today? Oh yeah. Oh great. Uh, all right, well here we are in the chief's office and as he said, he did make his bed. So we need uh, to remember to keep made. our our rooms clean right. when we have friends and now. the clothes are folded yes and the clothes are folded we're in a good good spot yeah. thank you so much for your time today course, and i know our 
our lamb school friends are super happy to hear everything that we have gone through today but also we wanted to ask you is there anything we can do to pray for your your team and yeah. um, yourselves today yeah just uh, pray for our continued guidance and our health and our safety um, crazy times right now with uh, with COVID yeah. and, and all that going on so just uh, just continue to pray for us to uh, be able to help others and uh, be able to stay safe and healthy so we can do that okay we will do that all right. all right kids let's remember to pray for them before we end our day today and thanks for coming out